channel. My name is Mouse, or also Andy, and I talk about books and book-related things. Um, it is November, and Thanksgiving has just ended, so I figured I would do this November wrap-up with an elf-themed wrap-up. So, this is my elf costume. Um, disclaimer that I've been Santa's elf for over 10 years, so um, this year I'm not going to get a whole lot of use of this costume. It is a brand new one. It's never before been seen at an event. Um, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I will not be wearing it to um, the large events that I normally do. So I thought that I would do a video um, in this costume. So here we are. With that being said, let's get this show on the road. I also want to disclaim that it is November the 25th, which means I have five days left of November. So some of the books that I'm going to... So I haven't... <laughs> How do I put this? So I'm still reading some books and I'm likely to finish them before the 30th and some of them I might finish at the end of the month and not include in this wrap up, but I will include them in the December wrap up and I will also probably talk about them in my end of the year wrap up period. So I just wanted to disclaim all of that information because I don't have enough time at the end of November to actually film this because it's the holidays and I do still have to travel. So. I'm not like far. I'm not like exposing myself to people. I want that to be very clear. Um, I just have to do things with my family. For November, what I have so far is that the page books that I've read are 44. The pages read is 13,467. The hours listened is 222. My average rating has been a 4.0. I read 23 fantasy books, 3 graphic novels, 4 horror books, 2 non-fictions, 4 sci-fis, and 1 thriller. I read 13 adult books, 2 middle grade books, and 22 young adult books. I listened to 17 audiobooks, 11 ebooks, and then 9 physical books. I read them, I mean. The books I read, 20 of them were um, by cisgendered authors, one was by a gender queer author, and the other was by an unknown author. I read books from two Asian authors, uh, one Latinx author, one black author, 16 white authors, and then two unknown authors. So that's our general statistics for the month. Uh, I did get a, I, I did get a lot read though. This was the first month of Clear Your Shit and I have only been reading books that I already owned. So I've gotten my Clear Your Shit uh, tally down to only about 46 books left to read that are owned books but unread, so I'm quite proud of that. I did DNF quite a few books this month. Uh, let's get those books mentioned. Actually, I only DNF'd one book, my bad. <laughs> I DNF'd May Calls, Cause Miracles by Gabrielle Bernstein. That was a self-help book. Um, it required 40 days of action on my part, and I'm just not in a place to commit that kind of time, so I DNF'd it because it just didn't make sense for me at the time, and I'm probably going to unhaul it just because I'm no longer um, in the headspace that I need mindfulness lessons. The next part of this video is normally where I talk about the worst books that I read or the best books that I read, just depends. I usually save the best for last though. Uh, in this instance, the worst book that I read was actually an arc. A lot of the time it happens to be an arc, but this one is actually a book that a lot of people have anticipated, so I really hate to do this, but that book is going to be For Better or Cursed. Um, who wrote that? By Kate Williams. It is the sequel to the Babysitter's Coven book. The reason that that book was so bad was, one, it was just a filler book in an overarching series, and I hate that. I, I hate it. Uh, two, our characters are one-sided and awful, and I hate them. Um, they are completely inconsiderate, and they also talk like 12-year-old valley girls, but they're supposed to be from, like, Kansas, and in their later teens, so 16, 17. However, they all sound incredibly immature, and like they should be in middle school. Also, the beef that I had with this book was that there was a homophobia joke, so they decide to go to Chick-fil-A. The two main characters of this book are, one of them is queer. The one that is not queer goes to Chick-fil-A with her friend, and they make the comment of, don't you know that Chick-fil-A is homophobic? And then they both go, but the waffle fries. My issue with this is you, as a straight person, are then initially basically telling your queer friend that you don't care about her rights, you would rather just get to eat waffle fries. This is really disappointing to me. 
um, to read, especially for a book that is on the lower end of young adult, I would have expected more and that we would teach um, teenagers that that's not an okay mindset. The other thing is that it had nothing to do with the plot, and so we could have gone without that entire conversation. But instead, Kate Williams chose to include a homophobic comment in her book, and that sucks. And nobody else mentioned it in the reviews for Goodreads, and I found that really distasteful and crappy. Like, you could have had a sensitivity reader tell you that that was a bad idea, and then she didn't. So, that book sucked. The only reason that I didn't DNF it was because I knew it would be a fast read because there's also paragraphs upon paragraphs of outfit descriptions which, to be honest, I can't see pictures in my head so I really don't read them because I really don't care. Um, but uh, I just... Mm, excessive descriptors. Not into it. And uh, the plot didn't make any sense and the way it was resolved didn't make any sense and we didn't have any questions answered and all of those are huge pet peeves of mine so... I didn't enjoy the book, needless to say. The best book that I read this month is going to be The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Uh, I, it was my book that intimidated me for Clear Your Shit. And it's a huge book and it's a part of an overarching trilogy and it is supposed to be like an epic fantasy and sci-fi book and it is amazing. I have never read N.K. Jemisin's books prior to this month. I did read Emergency Skin, which is a like short story by her. And that was absolutely amazing. The amount of story that she packed into this short story was incredible. And so I had very high hopes when I started the fifth season. And it genuinely is one of my favorite sci-fi books that I've ever read. I have been reading a lot of the more popular sci-fi. So I read Brandon Sanderson's first book in, Mistborn, in the Mistborn series. And I found that to be a really good book. However, N.K. Jemisin needs a whole lot more credit for the fifth season. I know she's won a ton of awards for it. But it's one of the most amazing books that I've read. Genuinely, hands down, one of the most amazing books that I've ever read. So I really, really enjoyed that and I recommend it to anybody who likes sci-fi and fantasy crossing over. Um, she just is an amazing author and the whole story was incredible. It's essentially um, these people that can create, I guess, like tremors and earthquakes in the world and it's, it's really hard to explain how the whole story comes together but it, it just was incredible. The writing was really well done, the characterization was really well done, but I also, I'm a sucker for character growth, and this book had a ton of it, and I loved that. You really see things grow. The way that the world was described also was understandable and not so overdone that made you feel overwhelmed, especially as somebody who can't see pictures. I knew what was going on, I had a feel for the world, and I just really loved that world. Now, it does switch into the um, first person in certain points, so it goes from regular storytelling, third person storytelling, to first person storytelling, and the first person storytelling was... or maybe it's second person. I'm sorry, it's been a minute since I took an English class. Um, but it was... A little jarring. I didn't expect that. However, when it all came together in the end, God, it was amazing. It was so good. And I cannot wait until I read the rest of the books because I'm very excited. My library told me that it was available and I was like, no, I'm doing a readathon, please. Um, but I will be reading it next year and I'm very excited about that. Now for an arc that I, I also actually rewind. I want to give an honorary mention of top book to Cute Mutants 1. So Art bought me this book and SJ actually follows me on Twitter and I am super enjoying this series. I got my hands on the arc for Cute Mutants 3 and I have Cute Mutants 2 ordered. Amazon lost my order and I have to get it ordered again but I'm very excited to read this. So if you like super queeros and you like the extraordinaries, if you like books like this you'd probably like uh, Cute Mutants. Also if you happen to be an X-Men fan, which I really am, it's the only like Marvel series that I like. If you happen to be a <laughs> X-Men fan. You'll probably also really enjoy this book. It's fun and the references in it are really well done. Um, unlike certain books by men, um, <laughs> the references in it are really well done in a way that makes you happy and not overwhelmed and think, hmm, could you have written this in a different way? It was a really good book and I'm glad that I got the chance to read it and I'm glad that I have um, become not necessarily friends, I guess, but in contact with SJ, and I think that they are wonderful. The other um, 
The next thing that I want to mention is the uh, best arc that I read this month. That is going to be Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olson. Sing Me Forgotten is a Phantom of the Opera retelling, so I will admit that I'm a little bit biased when it comes to this because Phantom of the Opera is actually my favorite musical. I didn't realize that it was a book too, so I will have to get my hands on that even though I don't like classics. Uh, but Sing Me Forgotten is a gender-bent retelling of Phantom of the Opera in a world that has magic um, and where people can affect your memories while you sing. So you have to sing in order for them to then affect your memories. Um, but those people are shamed and should not exist and they have a specific marking on their face versus um, another type of person who can just pluck memories from your mind and make this like memory elixir situation. Um, so I, this book was really well done. Some of the complaints that I saw in some of the reviews was that the character was sometimes immature and aggressive for no reason and sometimes she was passive for no reason and it didn't make sense. As someone who is a really big fan of Phantom of the Opera, I felt like this characterization was really true to the original and I appreciated that a lot because sometimes when we do retellings we completely, we keep the elements of the story but we don't keep the elements of the characters, especially when we gender bend these stories. And I felt like Seeing Me Forgotten did a really good job of this. The romance in it was fantastic and it still ended in a way that felt true to the story so I really recommend it um, I believe it comes out next year and it will be something I pre-order and uh, yeah I'm really excited about it so these are just some of the top books that I read this month and uh, the worst book that I read this month and why and just some of the information about how I what books I read. This was just a little bit of a summary of the kind of books that I read I have seen some suggestions that you guys want me to include the top five uh, and bottom five books that I've read for the month. I think I might do that in another video, but I'm also probably going to summarize the top and bottom books from each month at the end of the year and discuss kind of what the vibe is for next year when it comes to reading. So I hope that you guys will join me in that at the end of December. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. It means a lot to me. Also, don't forget to make sure that your notifications are turned on. It turns out for some people the notifications have been turned off for me. I don't know why, but someone pointed it out to me recently that they are having problems with my notifications. So if you have them on, double check that they're still on. If you don't have them on, you could. <laughs> And I hope you guys have a wonderful December and a wonderful Christmas. Um, thank you from my elf self and giving me an opportunity to show off my very cute new dress that I'm not going to get to show off like I normally would. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. And I, yeah, I'll see you on Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bye. Salada.